Well, I can't speak too much about the HCAP scores. Um, I do know that <clears throat> it's hard when patients are looking back on an inpatient stay and surveying or evaluating their providers based on their pain control or how much education they got about their pain while an inpatient. And again, it goes back to the education piece. If the patient has unrealistic expectations about their pain management um, or they disagree with whatever treatment decisions were made while they were admitted, then they're going to rate their provider very poorly and those HCAP scores are going to be adversely affected. So. That's a, that's a difficult one, I think, to try and... It's important to make sure that we're meeting the patient's goals and needs, but sometimes that doesn't always match what the patient's looking for or wanting, so that's where I see kind of a discrepancy with the HCAP scores coming into play. There's been some changes in, like, Joint Commission with mm -hmm. their pain standards that are coming out, and I think it'll be helpful to maybe take less focus on that number because patients become very focused on that number, and a lot of times we aren't seeing changes in that number. Um, but then we see that the patient, um, you know, they show up to a visit and, you know, they used to have a full beard and long scraggly hair and look unkempt and then all of a sudden, you know, then you, they come and they look like a whole new person and they clean their house up and all sorts of things that demonstrate functional improvement. Um, but they still say they have a seven out of 10 pain. On the other side though, like I think there's, in the private sector, I think there's more shift in focus on just patient satisfaction scores. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, still gonna end up playing a role in reimbursement and payment for providers. And I think particularly in pain management, I mean, they, they often have lower patient satisfaction scores. Um, and, you know, like I, I don't see how that can really work out. Because oftentimes we're delivering the bad news or we're confronting the patient about issues or concerns that no other provider wants to address. So yeah, they're not going to like us that much sometimes. But we have their best interests in, in mind. I call it tough love sometimes. Sometimes mm -hmm. the chronic pain patients need a little tough love. Or they need help getting the real resources that are going to help them improve their overall function and quality of life. And I mean, I think assessing pain is the fifth vital sign. Again, it depends on the clinical situation that you're in. If you're talking someone who's post-op with acute pain, obviously you need to assess their pain regularly, and, and the score is probably the easiest way to do that. But I know we've been focusing um, at my facility on when you're doing a pain assessment, the there are multiple interventions that can be made if a patient has a high pain score. It's not just medications, you know, um, distraction techniques, um, moving the patient in the bed, um, all those different things count as potential interventions or heating pads, ice packs, whatever is appropriate or indicated, but medications are not the only option available. And again, that's going to take education and kind of a shift in, in um, in thinking on you know various levels within the hospital facility to get that change um, implemented, not just focusing on on getting the patients the medications that they're asking for or demanding sometimes on an inpatient setting to meet you know whatever their goals might be or to get their pain score to an acceptable level.